Hey, superstars, this is my August update, and holy carp, I've got a lot to go over today. I've got care packages, contest wins, video responses, and some pickups to show off. Now, I know you love looking at this pretty face here, but uh, let's look at some cards. First up is a little care package from one of my oldest supporters, not to say that he's old, he's just been supporting me for a long time. Says, hey Scott, thanks for all you do in the community. I always enjoy your vids, big guy. Poor man stack. Are you calling me fat, Jason? I guess since I just called you old. Hey, that's cool. Tommy, Kluber, Kluber, Jimmy Dean Sandy, Doby, Blackjack, and this Sandy disc thing. Really cool stuff, Jason. Thank you, sir. Next is from one of my newer friends, Shoebox Legends. Ooh, I really like your handwriting, Shane. Sorry it took so long. Hey, no apologies necessary. Don't be silly. If you're going to apologize for anything, apologize for using Eddie-approved blue tape, which, as we all know, is inferior to Scott-approved green tape. But I don't want to get you in the middle of our little tape war. There's uh, Franimal, Grady, El Presidente, Eddie Murray, neat die-cut card, Jimmy, Cece, uh, Manny, don't call me Joey, Jose, and Feller. Those were rad. What's in this Helmar pack? Oh, nice. Ray Chapman. That is extra rad. I love that one. And Goto from the Churchill Dragons. Very, very cool, Shane. Thank you, dude. I want a recent giveaway from Jake the Ticket Leprechaun, who is about to have a little leprechaun, and I'm super excited for him. Well, he's not going to have a little leprechaun, his wife is, but you know what I mean. I was standing in an autograph line at the National when I found out I won this one. Uh, nice autograph Jake card, love that. Let's read this note. I hope that this 72 tops of the Say Hey Kid and my custom card find a home in your collection. Thanks for participating in my 500 sub contest and for all your support. Jake, my pleasure. And yes, these cards, although not of the Cleveland persuasion, are a treasured part of my collection. Thank you, sir. Look at that willy, what a cool card. This was from a giveaway from a newer channel to me, Sammy Thunder. Sammy is a vintage collector and set builder and gets some neat stuff. Says, uh, congrats on winning the second prize, first and foremost, from one bearded brother to another. Digging it, man. Thanks, Sammy. Uh, second, wanted to thank you for your support. I enjoy your versatility of content. I know I lean mostly on the vintage stuff as my personal favorite, but you leave your audience and myself included wanting to know what's coming up next. Thanks again, and congrats. Uh, thanks, Sammy. Very nice of you to say, man. I won't even give you a hard time about blue tape. Uh, here's Ricky, Doc, Chicken Man, Jim, Cool Keith, and Jose. Those Fleer headliners are neat. Uh, 77, Boog Powell, Phil Necro. 78, Raleigh and Fergie. Hey, the Chicken. Uh, 82, Royals Leaders, and Mr. Palmer. Thanks, Sammy. Great stuff. I've got my giveaway going on and Palm Beach Sports Cards did a giveaway at the same time. So a lot of our responses got lumped together, which is cool with me. It, it kind of makes us giveaway brothers or something like that. Anyway, his giveaway is over now and I didn't get a chance to make a response. So I'm doing it now. He wanted to know what our coffin card is. The way I look at it is that I'll be dead. So I don't care what happens to my cards, even my favorite cards. So I hope if my family doesn't want to keep them, which is totally fine, that they'll sell them off and buy a couple of jet skis or something. Uh, they'll be much more useful if they're not in the ground rotting with my stinky corpse. So that said, I'd want to be buried with this custom Roy Hobbs card that Milo made for me. I just showed this off last month, but it has the distinction of not only being one of my absolute favorite cards, but also worthless on the secondary market. So it's a win-win. What's next? This is not a four-leaf package. Tony is having a little TTM challenge with a stupid name. The Brandon Stebbins wins TTM challenge. Ugh. I'd said I'd partake, but we have to open our packs on camera so there's no funny business. Mr. Scott Esquire, here's your pack of cards and a guy who's from the state to the east of Indiana. Can't think of that state. Please help me out. It's Ohio, Tony. Uh, please open on August 31st and send out on September 1st. Now, how am I supposed to do that many drawings in one night? Uh, good luck and break a leg. There's uh, Browns legend Mark Edwards and our pack of 91 Leaf. We got Bryn Smith, Ron Gant, Bryn Smith, Ron Gant, uh, Bryn Smith, Ron Gant, 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 Bryn Smith, and a puzzle piece. Hey, I think I've got a pretty good shot at winning this one. 
Dustin and Blake are doing the Ordinary Average Guy giveaway. Super cool idea. They want to see who you collect who's not a superstar or a Hall of Famer or whatever. Just someone with a real blue collar, get dirty and do your job attitude. Now, being a Cleveland collector, I am all about that. You might think I'd go with my boy Alvaro Espinoza, but we all know he's going to be on the Hall of Fame really soon. So uh, when I was a kid, just starting my collecting, Joe Carter, Julio Franco, and Corey Snyder were my guys, the best players in the world, but the Indians were pretty lousy. And then they go and trade Carter to the Padres for Carlos Baerga and Sandy Alomar Jr. At the time, I was kind of devastated, but it turned out that that trade was the impetus for the great Indians teams of the mid-90s. Sandy went on to win the Rookie of the Year in 1990, and he was a six-time All-Star. He was just a fantastic catcher. He did everything right, except he couldn't stay on the field. At six foot five inches, I suspect he was just too big to stay healthy. And now he's our first base coach and catching coach, who's mentored some great defensive catchers in their own right, like Jan Gomes, Gold Glover Roberto Perez, and Austin Hedges is looking pretty good behind the dish. With a team that relies on pitching like the Indians slash Guardians, having really good catchers is super important. And I do think that it's very likely that if and when Tito Francona steps down, that uh, Sandy is next in line as manager. So here's to you, Santos Alomar Jr., unsung hero and mass covered face of my favorite franchise. One more video response. This one is for John Mangini, who wants to see some of our most beautiful cards. Again, they don't have to be superstars, just some beautiful cards like this T205 Joe Birmingham looking all gangsta. They could have great design like the 58 All-Star cards or the Topps Kids cards from the 90s. I do like bold graphic cards like that. And this 48 Leaf Jim Hegan, just gorgeous. Sometimes cards don't have to have great design. Sometimes they just need a great photo like Sammy Stewart here. Or they can have a bold design and a nice illustration like the 1936 Diamond Stars or Earl Averill. And I really love the early 50s Bowman illustrations. Here's a 1951 Al Rosen. And there are cards like Stadium Club that rely on excellent photography like this top-down shot of Jason Giambi. Uh, 93 Upper Deck had some killer photography too. I couldn't think of just one example. So we'll see what's in this pack. Nice Mark Guthrie. Ooh, I like this Kevin Sicer. Complaining about striking out. That's just really cool. You don't see that every day. And you don't see this either. Kenny Lofton cleaning his sunglasses on a baseball card. I've never seen this one before and I love it. Uh, Billy Ripken's not bad. And yeah, we can't really talk about great photography though without talking about 53 Bowman. So many great examples in that set. This uh, Mike Garcia is just a really simple and stunning and bold card. I love that one. Um, here's my favorite football card. I love showing this one off. Just Jim Brown in front of a parking lot. Not to be outdone by this postcard of Don Mossy winding up with a Ford Galaxy, which reminds me of the most beautiful card ever made. Of course, I'm talking about the 1966 Don Mossy. Wow. Um, I did buy some stuff this month, like this Roberto Perez autographed rookie. He's kind of a tough auto to get and a little pricey, so I've been looking for one of these for a little while. Got a decent price on that one. Here's the newest Indian, Miles Straw. I think this one's the short print, maybe, and a Mojo 84 thingy. Uh, here's the gold Mojo deal, number to 50. I've enjoyed watching Ahmed Rosario play this year. Here's a Chrome rookie, a gold 83, number to 50. This one's the retail and a chrome x-fractor and i figured i'd pick up a couple fran mills while he's slumping a little bit here's a base rookie and a gold rookie um dustin of dustin and blake messaged me the other day showing me a 1996 pinnacle jim tomey with boxing gloves that was part of a christy brinkley subset that she photographed for pinnacle it was really really neat so i hopped on ebay looking for cards from that set they're not super easy to find but i did find this manny and while I was rummaging, I found that I already had the Kenny, so that's a fun one. And, of course, I had to pick up Christy herself. Rawr. So I'll be on the lookout for more of those. Um, no vintage this month. Weird. Okay, keeping it awesome, everybody, and big hugs and thank yous to Poor Man Stack, Shoebox Legends, The Ticket Leprechaun, Sammy Thunder, that's fun to say. Go check out Palm Beach Sports Cards, Tony Black, Dustin and Blake, and the Man Genie Collection. Thanks all of you for watching. Much love, guys. We'll see you real soon with the results of my giveaway, which ends on the first, so get those bargain videos in for me. Ciao, amigos. Hey, that's better.